Hi, my name's Benji Claus, and welcome to Dice vs Cards. So it's that time of year again, ladies and gentlemen, and we're here with our Christmas gift guide, 2019 version. So we're gonna be giving 10 gift ideas in different categories, lightweight games, medium weight games, heavyweight games, and a bonus, stocking fillers. And we're gonna be releasing one of these videos each week throughout the month of November. So today's category is lightweight games, and we're gonna be giving you gift ideas, perhaps there'll be some family games in there, ones that'd be good for mum, or for your other half, or even cousin Dave, who's not convinced about this board game malarkey. So let's get to the list. Welcome to Baron Park. That's right, Bear fans, we have just the game for you. This tile placement game has only been part of my collection for a short while, but it's an absolute joy whenever it hits the table. This sings all the right notes in terms of complexity and challenge. Who would have thunk that making shapes on cardboard would be so much fun? Just, uh, yeah, don't go expecting your bear park to be optimally laid out. There's every chance you can put an outhouse next to an ice cream vendor, yet the scoring gods do not care. This is a game that scales well, doesn't dawdle, unless of course you've got one of those guys that proceeds to pick up every tile piece just to see if it will fit in their park ten turns from now. But a quick slap on the wrist genuinely puts pay to that level of analysis paralysis, leaving you sure to have a great time playing this game. Bunny Kingdom Close your eyes for a moment and just imagine a whole kingdom run by our furry, bouncy friends. It actually makes Planet of the Apes sound like a trip to a beach resort. Back somewhat to reality, and what we have here is a fantastic combination of territory building and area control, mixed with some remarkably synergistic card drafting. Despite being a lightweight game, this packs some real punch in terms of maximising the size and production of your fiefdoms by picking the two most optimal cards from your hand at any given time, and then watching you ramp up your score progressively each round. One thing's for sure, do not be fooled by this cutesy game, as it has some real gameplay teeth and makes for an absolutely winning family game that will keep you coming back for more. One thing's for sure though, do not, and I mean whatever you do, do not look directly into their eyes. Call to Adventure Who doesn't love a good story? What's even better you ask? Well how about a fantasy story packed to the rafters with chivalry, heroic acts, castles, dungeons, demons and elves? Well this is the game that allows you to bring that concept to life. Whether you start forging your character's narrative through dark deeds or head steadfastly towards the light, you're sure to have a great time playing this set collection game, where you craft your character's life story into three separate acts. The game also introduces a unique rune chucking mechanism, yep that is the best way to describe it, in place of good old fashioned dice rolling. Still it's in keeping with the theme of the game so who am I to poke fun. So if you're looking for an excellently crafted blend of storytelling and traditional board game then look no further than this immaculately produced game. Chronicles of Crime Fancy yourself as a bit of a dick, a uh, detective? Think you could be a modern day crime fodder? Then give this app integrated game the chance to get to your table. What we have here is very much a hand in hand, app based game where you'll be spending as much time if not more interacting with your tablet. But yet it still feels at its core like a board game. With the help of QR codes on all of the cards it's a fairly painless way to play an app based game. Furthermore, the VR-like 3D environments you can explore are a really fantastic and immersive part of the game. Rest assured this is no gimmick and it offers some excellent gameplay, weaving some really quite engaging stories into a game where you absolutely, positively have to have that brain switched on, with notepad at the ready in order to hunt down those dastardly devious crims. Cryptid. 
This is a game that puts you quite literally on the hunt for the next Loch Ness Monster, the next Bigfoot, or maybe even the next Chupacabra. Except our cryptid has no qualms about making its home in land or sea, swamp or mountain. So you as players will all have a small part of the puzzle as to the location of our elusive prey. And it's up to each of you, one at a time, to take a guess as to where this might be on the game's modular board. As the game progresses, you'll start to eliminate certain places the cryptid could be. So for example, it's not in a forest space, but it's within two spaces of a mountain. It's definitely in a Starbucks, but it's not drinking coffee. That sort of thing. Until one of you gets struck by that eureka moment and realises you've found its secret hiding place and win the game. Every playthrough of Cryptid will be different, and this will really test those visual acuity and deduction skills. Decrypto You can't have a list of gifts without a party game, and this has been a critical hit since its release last year. On paper this seems just like so many other Square games that you've had to endure at Aunt Griselda's house, but in practice you'll find something else here entirely. Of course, like so many word games, there's a certain amount of onus on the players themselves to make this a great play experience, but the fairly straightforward rules give you a wonderful platform to be able to do so. Your job is to secretly communicate a code to your teammates using communal keywords that stay the same round after round. So what happens is your opponent's team will start to pick up clues as to the words you're using, so your ultimate goal is to keep sending your coded messages without the other team intercepting them. This is a delightful party game and one that's a joy to get to the table. Dice Forge I have to admit that one of my favourite things in the world to do right now is craft, sorry, forge and upgrade my dice. Sound too much like hyperbole? Absolute nonsense. What a delight it is to have two dice cupped in your hand, ready to roll. Knowing that they're only going to get more and more powerful as the game goes on. Tell me that doesn't make you all warm and fuzzy inside. Alas, there is more to this game than upgrading dice. You're also managing resources, performing heroic feats, and making offerings to the gods. All the while getting to appreciate beautiful artwork and production quality to match. And that's without mentioning the best part. Everybody gets to do something on everybody's turn. Oh my god, player engagement baby. I love, love, love playing this game and it could easily find a home for all different types of playgroups because it offers something just that little bit different for a lightweight title. Tiny Towns. This abstract strategy puzzle game that stretches its legs and then curls up into a ball every time you throw some shapes, I must admit took me by surprise, because quite frankly, me and visual acuity do not make good bedfellows. And I'm big enough to admit that I might be the worst Tiny Towns player in the world, but that shouldn't stop me being man enough to admit when a good game is a good game, right? This really is a perfect marriage of abstract strategy and puzzle game, and that combined with the random nature of the building cards makes for some great replayability. This game can get quite competitive as you each take turns as the master builder dictating what resources each player can take and things get really really cramped by the end in that small square you call home. Suffice to say you're sure to have a challenging and engaging time visiting tiny towns. Welcome to... Ooh, look at this roll and write game. Okay, it's a bleeding flip and write game, I concede. But it's also a game that shows how the <laughs> and write genre is really starting to spread its wings. There's a great deal to like about this game. A game that can apparently, or rather facetiously I might add, accommodate up to a hundred people. Well, so long as you have the table space, of course. From the number of different actions you can take, so long as you pair it with the given house number, to the differing ways you can approach meeting the demands of town planners to complete objectives. There's generally always a fun and engaging experience to be had here. The fact that this is simultaneous player actions and you're all using the same tools means this is a very well paced, very entertaining addition to the genre. P.S. You'll also get to name your town. Ah, it's the little things. Wildlands. 
Hand management meets area movement, but they also invite a third party into the mix to spice things up a bit. Enter Stunning Miniatures. This board game has tabletop wargame quality miniatures and some helpful background and fluff to match the attention to detail on each faction's minis. But how does it play? Well, it's a slightly unusual mix of using cards to move, attacking your opponents and picking up treasure. All the while, your opponents might be holding the means to interrupt your turn. But it's that mix of taking out opponents and grabbing swag in the most efficient manner possible that's going to be the difference maker in you winning the game or scrambling in the dark and getting beaten to a pulp. If you want a beautiful looking miniatures game that's a conventional board game at heart and doesn't require you to have 6,000 dice to roll, then look no further than this beauty. We really hope we've given you some good ideas for gifts and if you've enjoyed this video then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with what we do.